Hi everyone, uh, my name is Gadoni Mbogwa. I'm a clinical psychologist and um, the head of digital relations here at Chiromo Hospital Group. I am very excited and truly honored today to be hosting um, Honorable Rachel Shebesh. Her face is familiar to your screens. Mm -hmm. Yes, but we have her here today for a different conversation, a conversation in which she is um, very well conversant with, passionate um, mm -hmm. about. Uh, you have a channel, uh, yeah. Shebesh Speaks, mm -hmm. and you have been very vocal and open talking about mental health. Yeah. Yes, I have. Yes, yes I and um, I'm proud to see somebody who is not only a woman, mm -hmm. but also a leader take charge um, in having this conversation, mm -hmm. uh, because this is a necessary conversation. True. And um, before we delve deep into the conversation, I would like to read one of my favorite quotes, mm -hmm. uh, which is by Glenn Close. And the quote states that what mental health needs is more sunlight, more candor, more unashamed conversation mm -hmm. about illnesses that affect not only individuals mm -hmm. but families um, as well. True. And this is what today's conversation is, is really, really about. True. Yeah. Thank you. Um, frank, authentic, mm -hmm. um, unashamed, and really just shining a light and showing positivity mm. uh, and functionality. Uh, where mental health um, is concerned. Great. So welcome to this Thank conversation. You. Thank um, you tell us about yourself. Um, how did you grow up? Where did you go to school? Yeah, I'm born in a yes. family of five and uh -huh. I'm the fourth born. Mm. Uh, I'm married and I have three boys. Mm -hmm. I have three grandchildren. Mm. Um, I'm a wow. politician and now I'm a chief administrative secretary in the yes. Ministry of Public Service and Gender. And I live with bipolar disorder. Yes. Yep. Wow, that's amazing. How did you come about the diagnosis um, of bipolar? Yes. How, how did that look like to you? Well, it didn't, I didn't realize that mm. I had bipolar, mm. but my husband did. Mm. And that was many years ago. Mm. And I thank God that he realized it because I was not aware, mm. completely oblivious to what I was going through. Mm. I just thought that is who I am. Mm -hmm. But at a point he noticed something was not right. And therefore, he encouraged me to go see a psychiatrist, which I did. Mm. And I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Mm. And since then, I live with it, mm. I manage it, and I succeed through it. Okay. Yeah. For somebody who is watching this conversation, because um, one of the things you say is that your husband knew. Yes. That seems that uh, you are lucky to be in a space yes. with somebody uh. who has a good level of self-awareness. Um, mm -hmm. But what are these things that he would see that would make him um, question, yes. does my wife, um, is she mm -hmm. having bipolar or not? True. I yeah. think what he saw is what bipolar is, a mm. fluctuation in moods. A fluctuation And my moods, moods would, I guess, fluctuate a lot. Mm -hmm. And so one minute I'm happy and the next minute I would be sad. Mm. And I, then I would be manic and then I would look like I am too sad looking like I'm going into depression although I don't have depression as the main thing my mania oh. is the main thing and mm. um, uh, I think after watching me for a while and yes my husband is very well well read and and very um, exposed yes I thank God yeah. because not many people may be as lucky mm. as I was mm. to have somebody who saw in me a problem mm. and addressed it with love mm. because most people will get noticed about their mental illness but people will treat them wrong right you yeah. will be ostracized you can even be laughed at mm. you'll be shamed i didn't go through that mm. then luckily enough as well as soon as my husband realized and i got diagnosed when we spoke about it in my immediate family mm -hmm. uh, from my uh, parental side mm. we realized it runs in the family uh -huh. and therefore i have a sister who is also bipolar. Mm. I have relatives, children who have issues of mm. mental illness, mm -hmm. and therefore also came to realize that it is a, uh, um, a, an illness that can run in the family, yeah. just like an, you can have diabetes that runs in the family, hypertension okay. that runs in the family. Yeah. It's genetical, and mm. we had to accept that. Mm. So I always say I have a very good support system. Hence, probably the reason why I can even sit here mm. 
and talk about it because around me I am surrounded by a support system yes and not only in my family mm -hmm. even in my workplace everybody who works around me and who has ever worked around me knows about my bipolar mm. so that they are able to stand in the gap for me yeah. when I need somebody to tell me you need to stop mm. when I need somebody to ask me have you taken your medication mm. and when I need somebody to tell me guess what we need you to be admitted yeah. it's a conversation that must be said with love but most of the time in mm. this country mm. it's not said that way yeah. our society is not ready yeah. I think the fact that we have this um, African heritage that does, does not allow families to expose people who have mental illness in their mm, families. Mm. We have a lot of myths around mental illness, including that you have been bewitched, mm -hmm. and therefore you need to go to church and be prayed for, yeah. and demons removed. And right, uh, right. we've lived with that mm. as a society for a long time. So we are not ready. However, mm -hmm. these kind of conversations we are having yes. must prepare us for Absolutely. a better way to have this conversation around mental well-being. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it is indeed why I like the name Sunlight and Kanda. Yes. Because Kanda yes. specifically just talks about uh, people being open, being yes. frank and being authentic. Yes. Yeah. But also talking about this um, kind of conversation yeah. in a positive uh, light. Yes. I'm also wondering how did you get your family to accept uh, when you told them about um, the diagnosis? You see, when I had this conversation now with my family, we realized everybody has many people in our family have that conversation right and again in my family side we are very open we mm -hmm. talk a bit about everything and we are a bit of, we are a bit deep mm -hmm. but then there was a leadership that was uh, there was a leadership for my elder sister mm -hmm. who also has bipolar who right. felt imp it was important to let the family know mm -hmm. about mental illness mm -hmm. so she made it her business mm -hmm. to talk to everybody from our immediate family to our cousins yeah to our other relations. Oh, wow. I mean, around our family, people know that we talk about it. Yeah. Sometimes we're even called like we are, we are consultants <laughs> on the matter. So wow. I guess, and mm. I'm saying this, I don't even blame people generally. I don't mm. walk around blaming people for not being on board with knowing what to do right. around somebody who has mental illness because the society has not mm. prepared them. Mm. And that's why I like this new conversation around mental illness. Mm -hmm. I like and I'm very proud of the president for putting a spotlight on it. Yes. Forming this mental health task, task force, force that was very important. Right. We don't need to lose more Kenyans mm. to mental illness because we are losing Kenyans to mental illness, mm. yet it is just as manageable, I say this a thousand times, like <laughs> hypertension, right. like diabetes. Mm. The same way you take your medication is the same way we take our medication. Mm -hmm. And this thing of being embarrassed about taking medication also needs to be demystified. Mm -hmm. People think that these drugs are to make you more, either make you more mad yeah. or make you or a zombie. zombie. Right. And that's what they fear. I've heard that. And, and, and it's a process that I also went through. Mm. And I keep telling people, it will take some time mm. and a bit of work with your psychiatrist mm. until you get the right fit. In the beginning, when I needed to be calmed, mm -hmm. when I needed to be you know, gotten out of depression, which I had gone into very deep. Mm. Definitely the medication I was given was heavy. It was heavy. And yeah. again, I say the same with any other illness. Mm. There are levels of other illnesses where you need more medication than what you need to manage. Right. So now I'm in the management stage. Mm. And I, I pray that I continue to be in the management stage because I also tell people, please do not think there is a magic formula. If you don't continue with your medication, as you know, mm. and of course seeing a psychotherapist so that you're able even maybe to be weaned off your medication at mm. a point. If you don't continue with that, then you can slide back yeah. into your mental illness and mm. that's not something we want to see anybody doing. Mm. Yeah. Wow, thank you uh, so much for, for highlighting that. Yeah. Uh, you know, I specifically like that you said, mm. you know, mental illness is just like any other True. illness yeah. in terms of manageability. Very manageable. Because there is a misconception out there yes. that you visiting um, a psychiatrist or having medication or seeing a therapist, it's mm -hmm. a one-stop shop. Yes. You know, like it's the switch of a button. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the realization that um, this is something that you will need to keep doing. Yes in terms of management. Yes. I also love that you, you said that you found the right fit for you. Yes, I did. Yeah. 
you have no idea when people come out how they struggle mm. to fit back into society without people looking at them like and tiptoeing around them. Yeah. And you know that thing yeah. of tiptoeing around you uh, makes you even more stigmatized and you can even lose uh, the ability to work mm. and to be normal because you keep thinking that everybody around you is talking about you. Mm. Another thing, wow. going through mental illness and getting treatment mm. does not mean you have to talk like me. Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. Yeah. I have been going through and managing my mental illness mm. for years without speaking out. Mm. I chose to speak out because I realized I have a platform. And I realized that around me, mm. I have a support system that accepts me yes. and knows about my mm. bipolar disorder. Mm. I know as psychiatrists, you have endeavored to talk about mental illness for a long time. For a long time. But the same way mental illness is stigmatized, it's the same way psychiatrists are stigmatized. Mm. So you are, you wear many hats. Mm -hmm. You're a mom, you're a wife, you're a mentor. I'm a granny. You're the public service. Mm. You said you're a granny. I actually did not know that. I did. So congratulations. I am. Yes, thank you. Um, how do you manage to still prioritize your mental well-being, even with all this? Because those are not light roles. I, uh, it is my priority, and it will always be my priority. Mm. Because if I don't have my mental well-being, mm -hmm. I can't function the way I'm supposed to function. Mm -hmm. And therefore, around me, at, when I'm working, I have developed tools mm -hmm. because I see my psychologist and I read a lot. Mm -hmm. You know my mental illness, bipolar, is triggered. My episodes are triggered. Mm -hmm. So I have learned what my triggers are mm. and how to manage mm -hmm. those triggers, mm -hmm. how to avoid them, how to avoid people who trigger me. It's a bit of an art when you learn it. I've also learned techniques as simple as breathing, mm -hmm. as simple as taking a, taking a minute. Mm. I mean, you don't even have to be noticed doing it. But even uh, sometimes I'm in a situation that is about to stress me mm. and trigger me. I will say, give me 15 minutes and I will walk out mm. and I will take my breaths mm. and I will calm my mind and I will come back to the meeting. Wow. So I am able to wear this hat and I'm able to function mm -hmm. because I work, I walk with my illness like everybody else walks with their illness. Mm. My biggest fear is depression. Mm. Mania, I can manage. Mm. Tell me about that. Mania, even sometimes I can enjoy. Because mm. you know, mania makes you super um, <laughs> productive yes. and kind of like a genius. Mm. But depression is what, to me, mm -hmm. made me start talking seriously about mental illness. Mm. Because it was so heavy and it is so heavy that you are totally unable. Mm. You are helpless to it. And if, if it was not for proper care, if it was not for the fact that I am already being treated, mm. I would have been lost in that depression. Mm. Actually, I got lost for a year and a half. I love how you are so authentic and candidly talk about mm. um, your own personal experience. Yes. Mm. I, I truly believe that um, stories, I mean, theory can be done, it mm -hmm. can be written, mm -hmm. but the real weight of it can only be known by, by the person yes. who has experienced yes. it, who yes. has lived it. Yes, true. Um, but I really want to ask you, on behalf of people who are going to watch this clip, mm -hmm. at what point did you get to that level of high self-awareness? At what point did you realize, okay, these are my triggers, um, this is what I need to do for me to, to function. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It has been a step at a time, mm -hmm. but let me say, I guess the peak of it, as I told you, mm -hmm. was after my deep depression, mm -hmm. which could have been now six or seven years ago. Okay. Mm. I remember I've had bipolar now for almost, I think, 15 to 20 years. Ah. So I'm old. By the way, it could even be more than 20 <laughs> years. Because I was diagnosed when I was in my early 20s. Mm. But six years ago after the depressive state, mm -hmm. um, when I came out of it, mm. is when I, because in that state, mm. I, I, I prayed, I cried, I felt guilty mm. for my children. I lost my political space. Mm. I, 
I, th I couldn't understand what this was. Mm. So I think, let me say that's the time I think that I became very, very sure mm. about not wanting mm. to go back to that state and being committed, mm -hmm. very committed mm. to my medication. Because one of the reasons why I slid into depression actually mm. is because I had stopped my medication at a point thinking, oh, I'm okay. That doesn't work very well. Um, but where I've reached now, this, maybe the high level of self awareness you're talking about, mm. is I think since I became a chief administrative secretary. Mm -hmm. And in government, you have you ask questions about absolutely everything. Yeah. And you can't say you don't know or we are not aware. Mm. Are you understanding? You mm. can't. And so when this discussion on mental health started, and I am now in the position of government, we are really, we need to give answers. Mm. I started my own way of lobbying around government mm. about mm. mental health. Hence, as I said, the commitment of the president yeah. and the mental health task force and what now we are rolling out as government. In my ministry, mm -hmm. being in charge of public service, mm. we've set up a mental health unit to be able to give support mm. to public servants. Remember all these stories you see about people jumping over out of Nyayo House or police officers killing each other, killing yeah. their families. Mm. Those are people, public servants. What I tell people all the time mm. is, uh, do you care about how your workmate is feeling. Mm -hmm. Do you care whether they are sad or they, they've missed work for two, three, couple of days? Mm -hmm. So within our ministry, mm -hmm. we have trained what we are calling champions, mm -hmm. people who you can call. So we, we, you, we make it aware for every state agency or department or ministry mm -hmm. that these are the people you can call. Mm -hmm. Those people are not necessarily psychiatrists, but we have trained them to be counselors, mm. to listen to you, and to be able to give you the advice you need yeah. as to where you need to get help. Fine, we have a serious problem of mental health in this country. Mm. Especially Corona, of course, has exacerbated it. Absolutely. But even if we made everybody aware that, hey, I could have a problem, mm. and we don't give them a solution, then as a government, we have not done much mm. and we must do something. Mm. Hence the reason I'm happy to come and speak to you. Yeah. I'm happy to speak to other people mm. so that people can even know where to go. Mm. So that even that parent mm. who has noticed something in their child can say, okay, I heard the government is doing that. I heard in every level five hospital, mm. there's a mental health unit. That functions. That functions. Yes. And that is there mm. a psychiatrist in every county. Yeah. And that's really the work we are doing as government now. Mm -hmm. The drive to make sure that we have the facilities mm -hmm. for those Kenyans mm -hmm. who we are now making aware. Mm -hmm. yeah. Congratulations for the work that you're doing Thank you. um, in that space. Thank you. And, and I really believe, I have actually started seeing yes. some of it um, coming to light. Mm -hmm. And the campaign that we are running, which is to Funguke, is to, Funguke. to encourage people to, to open, open up. up. To, to speak up and not to suffer in, um, in silence, silence yeah, yeah? and yeah. to prioritize um, their mental health, just like you have said that you made a decision to prioritize mm -hmm. um, your mental yes. health. Thank yeah. you so much for having this conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I look forward to having many other conversations um, with you Thank in the you. future. Thank you. Uh, more on coping, on mindset, uh, basically you being the best uh, version of yourself, mm -hmm. how that journey has, Thank you. you know, has been. And um, continue doing what you're doing. I will. You know, I will encouraging sure. um, all of us. Yeah. Yes. And you guys also continue doing what you're doing. Yes. I like finishing all my conversation with it's okay not, not to, to be, be okay. okay. And uh, I think that's a mantra that everybody should know. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Thank and you. if you're watching this, um, remember, uh, let's speak up, let's open up um, mm -hmm. about our journeys. Let's learn to speak to each other. Let's learn to speak from our hearts. And um, to funguke. To funguke. <laughs>